So I'm pleased to be speaking today again with MRS President Matt Coppell. Matt is a research staff member at the IBM TJ Watson Research Center. Welcome, Matt. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. Always a pleasure. Good to see you too, Matt. Thank you. So um, let me start with uh, sort of an obvious question. Now that most of us have been working remotely for several months, how has your professional life been and how is your research progressing? Oh, well, there's no question. This has taken some time to adapt uh, and, and it has not been easy. Now, uh, fortunately, uh, New York is starting to very slowly, cautiously open up a tiny bit. Uh, and uh, I'm able to come into the lab a couple times a week. So that's made a tremendous difference. Um, when I'm in here, I work completely solo. Um, I'm wearing a mask and a gloves uh, almost whenever I'm in here um, because uh, I'm a complete coward. Uh, that's just the way I am. Um, now, I have found that you really cannot replace those uh, serendipitous encounters with people. You can't replace those with a scheduled meeting. So that's one thing that, that is just hard to make up for. Uh, but I also just wanted to, while we're talking about our professional lives, I understand, Gopal, that you have a new job and a new title at the MRS, and I want to congratulate you on that. And can you just tell us, like, what's the title and what's the new job? Thank you very much, Matt. I appreciate it. Um, so as you know, I've been editor of MRS Bulletin for some time now. In my new role, I'll be involved with program development for our MRS meetings as well working with the MRS chairs. Um, and I'll also be the technical point person at MRS headquarters for our various interactions with other organizations or different collaborations. Uh, I'll note that I will continue to have editorial responsibility for MRS bulletins, so I'm not leaving that or giving that up. Um, but I hope to bridge MRS meetings, programming, and MRS publications content. Uh, which I think is very important. So thank you for asking. I appreciate that. that. That really sounds like an important role that you'll be fulfilling. And I very much enjoyed turning the tables and asking you a question for a change. <laughs> thank you, indeed. Um, so you touched upon a um, couple of things that have been uh, difficult for us in our professional lives. One of those is meeting people, interacting with people, discussing research, science. Um, by now, I think everyone knows that the 2020 MRS fall meeting combined with the postponed 2020 MRS spring meeting will be virtual and online only. Um, so we will certainly miss being in Boston, seeing everyone, uh, which has become a ritual for many in the community. Um, what additional details can you provide on this new unprecedented format for a popular Boston meeting? So uh, there's one um, particular detail that I, I want to highlight, uh, and that is uh, the uh, late news hot topic call for papers, which will be coming out very soon. Now, there's been a lot of uncertainty uh, with the plans changing for the spring meeting and for the fall meeting. And we understand that a lot of people who contribute to these meetings, uh, you know, have gotten uh, a little bit confused about what's going on and what to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to compensate for that uh, by having a more extensive period where people can submit for the late news sessions, which are, which are always really exciting sessions. They're great places to present your work. So we expect sometime uh, early September, probably in a matter of weeks, we'll put out the call for, for late news hot topic sessions. Um, and and th that's a great place to submit your work. 
Now for other details uh, about how to present and things like that, uh, we're working on those things. The place to look is on the MRS and the meeting website. Uh, there's a fact sheet um, and uh, that will have all the information that people need. So uh, one thing, other thing I wanna convey is that we're really depending on our members to participate and make this a great meeting uh, because so much of the content is created by our members. So uh, if you're listening, please participate in the meeting. We're relying on you because you are most of the meeting. Now, um, I recently, I had the pleasure of calling up uh, people who were receiving awards at the fall meeting. And it, 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 this, this is my favorite part of the job as president, by the way. So um, I called them up to inform them and congratulate them. And while I was chatting with them, I asked them about the fall meeting and whether they were gonna submit some abstracts besides their work talk. So I'm pleased to say they're all showing up. They're submitting their abstracts. And that's, uh, according to our committees who give out these awards, that's some of the best research that's out there. And they're gonna be at the meeting. So if you're listening, I hope you're gonna be there too to hear some of this and participate in this great research. Okay. Um, I think certainly the meeting program as it is even now, uh, combined with the spring meeting program looks very exciting. Um, and the late news hot topic call for papers will just add to that. So um, I'll second your recommendation for members out there and the community to, to certainly explore um, submitting an abstract and joining the conference as well. Um, segueing into online conferences, um, have you had the chance to attend or participate in other online conferences, workshops, webinars, or colloquia in recent weeks? And I was just wondering what your impressions are uh, of online participation in these. So um, I have participated in a bunch of, in things like webinars and um, individual events. I've not participated in extended conference yet. Um, I will say I especially enjoyed, uh, there was an MRS hosted social event a couple weeks ago um, uh, that uh, I really enjoyed participating in that. And I hope we're gonna do some more of those because I think that those are great. Um, my general observation is that uh, smaller breakout sessions uh, they may be more work for the organizers. In fact, I'm sure they're more work for the organizers, but they tend to work a little bit better because there's a chance to speak up. Um, so maybe the optimum size is around half a dozen or a dozen people for that kind of thing. Now, uh, I've also, I've talked to a bunch of researchers about their own experiences going to meetings and conferences. And the impression that I've gotten is that uh, a well-organized meeting, if they do the job right, it really works in terms of presenting information and as a learning opportunity. So those elements, they're in place, they work. And uh, MRS has hosted, I think, three virtual conferences over the summer at this point. So we got that part. We know how to do that. Um, what tends to be missing, um, from what I've heard from researchers is this element of spontaneity um, and maybe some of the joy that people get when they attend a conference. Uh, and that's, that's, that's tough. Um, we're gonna have to keep on experimenting on how to bring in those social aspects of the meeting. And I think this social uh, event that MRS uh, hosted a couple weeks ago, I think that's like a first, really good first step in that direction. So I think we'll get there, um, but there can be some learning on how to do that. I think um, 
additional such social events are being planned by MRS. So stay tuned um, and watch your email and other information from MRS. Uh, and I do agree that was really successful and very, very nice. I think people enjoyed that. Um, let me close by talking a little more about the current pandemic. We have previously discussed how the current situation has altered our world and life in so many ways that will have long-term repercussions. Uh, and the last time you had talked about the important idea of resilience in the in the situation, I was wondering, do you have uh, additional thoughts on that or want to expand on that? Yes, um, I, I have been spending a lot of time thinking about it. And um, I, I know uh, a lot of people feel like uh, their lives have been suspended during this period of physical isolation. Uh, part, at least parts of their lives. Uh, but if you look outside, you realize it's clear that the world keeps on turning and history is still being made. Um, uh, those things keep on happening, but science, uh, it's not clear that science will keep on happening. That's not a given. We need to do that. We need to go out and actively make that happen. Uh, and it's the job of MRS to make sure that you have ways to disseminate your research, because that's part of science. And that can't be put on hold. So, uh, for instance, I recently talked to some early career researchers, and they need to find jobs. They can't wait a year. They, they have great results. They need to go out and present those results so their careers can move forward. And there are, a lot of other, there are a lot of other instances where you can think of work that just can't be put in a shelf, that we can't wait a year to disseminate the work. Uh, so that's why we, we're going ahead and we're having this co-located spring fall meeting. And it's also why I'm asking all of you who are listening to join us and help us make this conference a success, please. Those are my friends. Very well said, indeed. Um, so thank you, Matt, for talking with us again today. And I'm certainly looking forward to participating in the uh, MRS fall meeting uh, virtually in its new format coming soon. So thank you again. Thank you so much for interviewing me. I, I really, it's a pleasure talking to you. And maybe next time around, I'll grill you about your new job. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Mike. Okay.